Hello everyone, and in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a tornado in Blender, of course. Um, this is the first video tutorial that I'll be posting on this website, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll still be posting some other text tutorials too, so I'll kind of be doing a mix between video and text in these next couple of months. Uh, maybe one will win over the other, it depends on what people's interests are. But let's get on with the tutorial right now. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be making. And let me, let me play this here. I don't know how well this will show up on the screen. I'll post a link to it, of course, in the video description. But as you can see, you can see the debris sort of swirls up from the bottom and the funnel comes down to meet it. I know it's not 100% accurate, but it should still work. It should still suit our needs. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple different particle systems in here. Um, they're going to be uh, basically affected by force fields, which if you don't know what a force field is, I'll explain that soon, um, to create the debris. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create and animate the funnel cloud to complete the effect, of course. Um, so yeah, today we'll be working on the debris, and I guess we'll get started on that. So first, delete the default cube just by pressing X delete. Uh, we don't need the lamp either, so right click it to select it, delete it. Let's add a plane, shift A, mesh, plane. Just keep it at the default size it's at now, because that should work. Um, Alright, we're going to add a particle system first. So let's come over into the particles, and we're going to add a new particle system. And we're going to name this one main debris. Um, the, this will be the main debris, basically, like the title says. Um, it'll be somewhere in between large and small. I guess it's just a medium-sized debris in the center that'll give most of the coloring to the debris. It'll be the main part of the debris. Um, so we'll start by setting the amount to 50,000. And what that'll do is that'll, of course, increase the amount. It was at 1,000 by default. Um, so we changed it and added a lot more particles, because we'll just be needing a lot of them in this case. Um, of course, this will depend on how much your computer can handle in the end, but my, I'm assuming your co computer can handle this much. If it can't, then just lower the amount, and it should still look pretty good. Um, now what we need to do is change this end frame here to 250. Basically, the start and end frame is where it stops, starts and stops emitting the particles. So it will stop emitting particles in frame 250. If I were to set this to 5, and you watch the viewport in here, and I hit all day, you notice no more particles come out of the mesh after frame 5. So that's when the, when the object stops emitting the particles. If you can see now, it looks like that. It's a lot of particles. Um, I'm going to set the lifetime to 125. The lifetime is how long they last, of course. If I set that to 5, and play the animation, they all disappear at frame 5. Um, but we want them to stay in there a while longer, so we'll set that one to 125. We also want to increase the random to 1. Now what this random value does is it randomizes the lifespan. So like some particles could die on frame 100 and others could die on frame 130, and it tries to average it around that general number that we defined with the lifetime. So it'll, it'll, they'll die around 125, frame 125, but not exactly, so it won't look quite as automatic. And now we're going to come down here to the normal geometry, and we're going to set the normal oops, to point zero 0.01. The normal is basically how it shoots out the particles, so it practically won't be shooting out anything at all. As you can see, they're not bouncing up as much as they used to. In fact, you can't really see them bouncing up at all, but they are a tiny bit. Um, we also want to give them some Brownian motion. Brownian motion is random motion. We'll set that to 5. Um, but each of the particles will sort of be moving in kind of random directions. Uh, it's not quite as obvious now. It will be once we change this last setting. Because what I want to do is, under field weights, I want to turn the gravity off. So there is no gravity affecting these particles at all. So now if you hit Alt-A, you can see they're just kind of going haywire. They're going everywhere, and it looks 
It doesn't quite look like a t tornado, or the debris at the bottom of a tornado. I guess it kind of could, but that's not really how it would look. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a force field. Two force fields, actually, to control the particles and make them look a lot more like debris. So we're going to start... Oops. We're going to start by adding a vortex force field, which, of course, as you can tell by the shape of the force field and the name, I'm guessing, is that it um, spins the particles around or anything affected by it. I'm going to set the size to 5. The size doesn't affect the particles, at least I don't think it does. Um, it just affects what you see here in the viewport, so I can see it a lot easier if I increase the size. And then I'm going to come over here into the physics panel, and I'm going to set the strength to 2. So now if we look, just keep looking from the top view, you'll notice that the particles are spinning around there in the center, which is exactly what we wanted them to do. But if you notice from the front view, it still doesn't look a whole lot like tornado debris. We want them to not come down as much on the bottom here, maybe, and go up more towards the top, so there looks, it looks like they're being sucked up the funnel. So what we need to do for that is we need to add a wind force field. And we need to move that down maybe to right about there, and set the strength to 1.5. And that will blow upwards on the particles. So it will, yeah, you know, it'll push the particles upwards so they don't go down as much, and we'll just see how this looks. So as you can see, it's looking a lot more like tornado debris. If you can picture an imaginary funnel there, you were just going to say oh, this arrow part right here is the funnel, and you could sort of see it spiraling up there. Uh, it's not running very fast, uh, because I'm recording at the same time, but it should be running a little faster in your computer at least. Again, that depends on how fast it is. So, okay. Yeah. So we have that main particle system set up, the main debris. Now I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Shift D, right click to just lock it in place there, and we're going to press the 2 on the particle system. That will make the particle system a single user, or a separate particle system. Basically, if we didn't click that 2, then any changes we made on this particle system would have affected the other particle system. So it wouldn't, they wouldn't each be their own system, they would be linked together, basically. And we don't want that, because we're going to change some of this. So we're going to name this, this next one, Tiny, whoops, Tiny Debris. And these will be little tiny debris pieces. A lot of this won't be displayed until we get into the materials, which I might do if I have time on this part of the tutorial, but I don't know if I will, because it's already taken me about seven minutes to get this far. So let's set the amount, 10,000. A lot less than the previous one. Um, keep the end at 250, lifetime at 125, random at 1. Keep all those default settings. Um, keep the normal at 0 0.01. But we're going to set the random here to 3.5, which is a lot of random. And basically, that makes it so that the object is emitting particles in random directions. And it's just totally random, pretty much, because that's a relatively high random value. And... Uh, keep the brownian motion at 5 and the gravity at 0, and let's see how that looks. So we can see that those ones are more skirting along the outside, um, and not quite in as deep as the main debris. So that's pretty cool. You can see them going in action on the outside there. Alright, um, we're going to duplicate this again, and click the 2 again, and we're going to name this one Outer Dust. Oops. And this will be sort of the dust that you see on the outside of a tornado that's not really sharp pieces of debris, but it's sort of like a hazy kind of particle system going along the outside. Um, yeah, so that's what this is. This won't actually be going quite out as far as the tiny debris was, though. So we're going to keep all of the same settings, except we're going to change the random to 2. So now if we look at this, we see it's still going out farther than the main debris, but not out quite as far as the tiny debris, which is pretty much what we want. Um, it'll, it'll obviously look a lot better when we render it. So we have a lot of particle systems going on right now. Um, 
but we still have to add one more, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, one more particle system. So I'm going to duplicate this one last time, make that a single user, and we're going to name this object. Oops. Object debris. And this is basically going to be using objects as particles because, of course, um, you know, if a tornado just hit a house or something like that, you would see pieces of debris, like pieces of the walls and the roof and things like that. Um, so we're just going to say it hit a neighborhood or something like that. We'll say it's evacuated just to make it nicer so that nobody dies in this tornado. Um, either that or it hit some barns or an old ghost town or something, I don't know. But whatever it is, it just hit something where there were pieces of visible debris that were being blown up into it. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to let me double check the settings here. Um, all those should be good. We're going to put the random at 2.75 just to make that a little different. Um, okay, now we need it to use an object. So I'm going to add an object on the second layer here. You'll notice I clicked into the second layer going to add another plane, and we're going to give this a new material, name it dark, I don't know, just something like that. Um, turn off the specularity, make this a lot darker, like really dark, with a hint of brown, maybe. And I'm going to name this walls, I don't know, that'll work. Could have named it debris, I guess. But okay, now with that walls plane that we just added, we're going to come down here and we're going to change this from halo to object. And we're going to click on this box and we're going to find the walls object and now it will use, you can see it, there's actually a little piece of it right there now. Um, and if we look, we can see that it's emitting those wall objects. So you can see them, um, it really slowed down my computer there. Um, but, so that's what that does. So now we have the objects in there to make it look a lot more realistic. They are a little big though, and kind of chaotic. So I'm going to adjust the size of those. We're going to set the size to 0 0.015 and the random size to 1. So that'll add some variety in the size. So now if you look, they're a lot smaller. Um, a lot more variety in the size. And it definitely looks much more like tornado debris than it did before. And I think I've gone about 12 minutes into this, so I think that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm using YouTube to upload my videos, so I have a 15 minute time limit. So I think I'm going to end part one right here. And yeah, part two will cover the materials and probably the funnel cloud. I don't know, depending on how long it takes, I might have to divide that into two parts too. I hope not. Um, but yeah, so that concludes this tutorial. And keep submitting more tutorial requests um because i've got a few already that i'm working on and yeah so that's all and i hope you enjoyed it and if you have any problems or questions or comments or just anything like that post them in the comments um on either youtube or my website wherever you're watching this video and yeah thanks for watching